Hi, everybody. It is Peter Schiff. It is Tuesday morning, August 17th, 2010, and I am spending an extended weekend out here in Fire Island. I will be back in my office working full-time on Wednesday, uh, first time I've been full-time at Europac in about a year because, as you know, I've been running unsuccessfully for U.S. Senate. You know, last week I commented on some of the negative fundamentals uh, for the U.S. dollar, despite the fact that the dollar rallied, the dollar index got up around 83. Well, we got more negative news for the dollar over the weekend, and this morning the dollar index traded down to about 82. Uh, first of all, we learned that uh, the Chinese have been reducing their holdings of U.S. Treasuries uh, by about 7% or so uh, recently. Uh, they have increased their holdings of euro and Japanese yen denominated sovereign debt. Now, this is a sign that the Chinese economy are, in fact, moving away from the U.S. dollar as the principal currency in their reserves. And this is at a time where we found out over the weekend that China officially overtook Japan as the world's second largest economy. Now, it wasn't too long ago uh, that they overtook uh, Germany as the world's largest exporter. We know they already overtook the U.S. for both the world's largest automobile market and the world's largest consumer of energy. You know, the United States is the third largest exporter, but we are the first largest importer by a factor of more than two. We import more than twice as much as either Germany or Japan, despite exporting less. And that shows you how much our GDP is going to have to contract to bring our living standards in line with our production. You know, also, we got negative news out of Japan. We got comments from Japanese officials that it would not make sense to intervene in the currency markets to uh, try to retard the yen's rise because they said it's not a function of yen strength but of dollar weakness, that the economic fundamentals in the U.S. are deteriorating, and so the result is a weakening dollar, and that the Japanese should not do anything about it. And that helped bring the dollar to a fresh 15-year low against the Japanese yen. Now, as I've always said, that the financial economic crisis of 2008 was an American crisis. It affected the whole world because the whole world loaned us the money that we squandered. But it was a fundamental problem with our economy. And that's why the global economy will recover and the U.S. economy will not, because the stimulus, the bailouts, everything we're doing is exacerbating our problems. It's preventing the economy from restructuring in a positive way. And so it's not that there's a probability that we're going to have a double dip. It's 100 percent certainty. And again, I don't even consider it a dip. I consider it part of the same depression that will go on for years and, and, and years. You know, also, I wanted to talk again about the reaction to my blog um, last time regarding unemployment compensation. And if you look at the reaction that it sparked, uh, particularly uh, you know, on some of the other YouTubes, several YouTube videos have been made in reaction. Uh, look at all the comments on that uh, on that video. Many of them are negative comments, and it and it shows uh, the degree of the political problem that we have now with the number of unemployed. Because people are accusing me of beating up on the unemployed, of you know calling the unemployed lazy. And of course, I'm doing no such thing. I'm simply pointing out uh, the unintended consequences, the moral hazard inherent in our policy towards the unemployed. And you know, let's, let's think about it this way. Let's say I said that we're going to give everybody uh, who is on unemployment a million dollars a year in benefits, a million dollars a year. Now, I, I know that's outrageous, but let's just think about that, a million dollars. Now, would anybody who is unemployed take a job or look for work? Well, maybe if they can get a job at two or three million a year, they might do it. But most of us uh, would not. I mean, would, would I call somebody lazy if they turned down a job that paid $100,000 a year so that they can earn a million dollars a year on unemployment? Of course not. They're not lazy. They're just rational. They're just smart. They're just making the right choice given the options that they have. Now, let's, let's take the example uh, to a more realistic level. Let's say somebody is getting $300 a week on unemployment. If they get offered a job for $300 a week, is it lazy of them to turn it down? No, it's smart. Why would you take a job at $300 a week when you can get paid $300 a week not to work? And, you know, people say to me, well, but you can't live on $300 a week. Look, I didn't say it was easy to live on $300 a week, but I know one thing. It's a lot easier to live on $300 worth of unemployment benefits than have to work 40 hours a week to get that $300. And, of course, by the time you finish paying your, your, your taxes or your costs to get back and forth to work, you're better off financially 
Uh, who knows what you have to be offered? Maybe it's 350, maybe it's 400, maybe it's 500 to break even versus the unemployment. And another option you have, if you're collecting $300 a week in unemployment benefits, you have the ability to supplement that. You can do odd jobs, you can work under the table, you can get extra income, but you can't do that if you actually have to show up at a job for eight hours a day to get that $300. That maybe you can't live on. But the bottom line is, it's not that I'm insensitive. You know, I, I feel bad that people are unemployed. I feel bad that government policy that I know is wrong is destroying the higher paying jobs. But if we pay people not to take the lower paying jobs, we're going to destroy our economy completely. And then the unemployment benefits are going to have no value to anybody because they're going to buy very little because we're going to have runaway inflation. We can't create an economy where people aren't working. Now, you know, and if you compound that, and I didn't just say that we were encouraging unemployment simply by extending these benefits. And of course, you know, when the benefits are for a finite period of time, if you know the benefits are going to go away quickly, you might take that $300 job versus the unemployment check because you know when the check runs out, maybe that job won't be there anymore. So you're going to go and try to find a job. Um, but, uh, you know, if you know it can go on for years, why, why would you? Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention on the unemployment. You know, people are saying, well, if Peter Schiff ever collected unemployment, he would be singing a different tune. Well, that's not true. I did collect unemployment at one time in my life, and I was in my early 20s, and I decided, I made a rational decision not to look for work until my employment benefits had run out. I decided I wanted to take the extended vacation. I thought it was a good opportunity for me to enjoy myself, uh, to spend some time on the beach, uh, to hang out, and, and not to have to work, because I knew that once I started to work again, I wasn't going to be able to take you know, a four or five month of vacation. Now, what did I do? You know, at the time, I actually went and gave out resumes. I went to offices. I, 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 I made a log of what I was doing because I was afraid that I would, you know, get caught because you had to, you know, say that you were looking for job work. You had to show up at an unemployment office and look a woman in the face and say, I look for work and I didn't get any. So I at least went through the motions and I figured it couldn't hurt to pass out these resumes because I knew eventually I was going to want to get a job. But I didn't want one while I was getting my unemployment benefits. And, you know, it wasn't that I was lazy or lacked ambition, but I just, you know, thought that this was a good opportunity for me. And I know there are a lot of people that are doing that today. There are a lot of young people. Yeah, can you live on $300 a week or $350 a week? Not if you're trying to support a family, but if you're single, you know, if you want to backpack around Europe for the summer, that's plenty of money. If you want to go down to Central America, it's even more. And, you know, you can do that today. I couldn't travel abroad because I had to show up at an unemployment office. Today, you don't have to show up anywhere. You can just get your benefits online. You don't even have to look anyone in the face and lie. You just type something into a computer, which makes it so much easier to do. But I didn't just say that we were, uh, you know, subsidizing unemployed by giving them uh, benefits. You also have other things. I mean, what if you're a student? You can, get a, you can get a hardship deferral. You know, you don't have to make your student loan payments if you're unemployed, right? Well, now if, you're, if you get a job, not only do you have to pay taxes on your income, but now you have to start paying your student loans off again. All these different incentives we make. And of course, the most irrational one that I mentioned yesterday was this $50,000 quote unquote loan uh, to unemployed homeowners. You know, remember those ninja loans that we all laugh about, you know, no income, no assets, no job, and how stupid we said they were? Well, these are even more stupid than the ninja loan. Because with a ninja loan, you didn't know if the guy had a job or was unemployed because you didn't ask him to prove that he had a job. Well, these loans, you know the guy is unemployed because you have to be unemployed to qualify. And of course, the ninja loans at least had collateral. I mean, even though it was inflated, if a guy paid $400,000 to buy a house, the house was theoretically worth the 400000 he paid. And real estate was rising, so you had some collateral. But these loans, you're loaning a guy $50,000 when he already owns $300,000 on a house that's worth 200000 So there is zero collateral behind these loans. These loans are more reckless and more irresponsible than anything that was done before. So to people who are objecting to my video, what, what do you think we do? We continue to make mistake after mistake just because people are unemployed and we want to pretend we care about them. We're going to keep giving them money until the money has no value. We're not going to let our economy restructure. We're going to destroy it. We're going to drive it into the ground. We're going to wipe out everybody. And unfortunately, you know, that is the politics. That is one of the reasons I remain so negative on my outlook for the United States because of the types of reaction we got to my video blog yesterday. No politician will tell the truth. No politician will do what's right. They're going to continue to pander to the voters. They're going to pander uh, to the special interest groups, now the unemployed. And they're going to try to pretend that they care by doling out money that will eventually be worthless. Anyway, take care, everybody. So long. Bye-bye.